Well, this person requested, uh, what if I want my sky to have a smooth transition between the colors? How do I achieve a smooth gradient without overblending the colors? Well, it's mostly technique and a little bit of principle. Well, first I want to blend. I want to address the overblending. We do get a feeling of overblending when we continue to stroke over the same place on our paintings. Uh, just to give you an example, say suppose I have a mixture of say blue and maybe red violet as we have here, and so if I make a single stroke or even just stroke over it like that, you can see there is something of a vibrancy there that you have by making just very few strokes, not more than, than three in one place, but the fewer the better. But a lot of people feel unconfident with their, with their mixing and their brush strokes, and a lot of people will do something like this. They'll start out very, 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 very uh, short strokes, like this, and they just stroke, 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 stroke. One little area like that, they just stroke the dickens out of it. Well, you see what happens there. Then you do get over blending. It, all the particles of the paint and the colors get all blended together. And eventually they just get dead, especially if you keep stroking. So I think I call that the double method, and I'm sorry if I offend someone. Uh, instead of dabbling your paint onto your canvas, stroke it. And you can learn to do that by getting your color mixtures here on your palette before you start painting. And if you need to test a color mixture, uh, you could do something like I, 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 a practice I've done for years where you mix it in your brush on your, can, on your palette like I'm doing here and then hold it up to the area to see is that the color you want. If you feel... Um, a little unconfident about that, about the stroking and about the mixing. But learn to use the brush, uh, learn to allow the brush to stroke the color on and keep going forward towards forming the shape you want instead of dabbling, instead of this sort of thing, that sort of thing. That's one really important clue for keeping your colors from being overblended and keep nice fresh color. But there, other, another part of that is use the largest brush that you can use in the area you're working in. The, in fact, it's better to use a brush that's a little bit too large than one that's too small. If you're using a very small brush where you're in a painting a very large area, maybe even such as a sky, and then use that dabble thing, that little dabble, uh, stroke that I see so many people using, it's not a stroke, it's just dabbling, then those two things together can give you um, flat colors and, uh, and kind of a stiff painting. So correcting that kind of habit will go a long way to help with that problem of overstroking. Now to the question of blending colors, and I'm going to rinse the brush out here. Um, and this is another important thing, when you rinse the brush out, rinse the brush out with a good solvent if you're painting in oil. If you're painting with acrylics, of course you would use water to rinse your brush out. Um, rinse your brush out, but then give it a really good squeeze to get all that out of the brush. You don't want that solvent to get mixed in with your paint because it's going to change the consistency of the paint and that will interfere with your ability to blend as well as your ability to keep your colors fresh. So there's another thing. See that's technical stuff but the technical stuff is so important in good painting. Then there's another thing I do that uh, I, not many artists, some, art, some other artists do 
But when I set up my palette, I set it up in value lines. And there are other quick tips about my value lines. But for every color I decide that I'm going to need in a painting, uh, I, pu I put lines, a value line of color for that. So you can see here, this is called not only a value line, but a color line. Because I, I see that I would need uh, a, a really desaturated, uh, or not real desaturated, somewhat desaturated red orange, which is what this is. But I see that as that hits into light, I would need more yellow. And so then I will use yellow. It's a light color, but it's also a part of what happens in the picture or in the reference. And so I'll just use the yellow then to create a value line because that sequential color that uh, happens when yellow mixed into this, I can see in the reference itself. And so for, and then for uh, my other colors that I don't see that sort of thing, I just see them maybe getting lighter or darker mostly, I will create a value line with white by gradually adding white. So the value line always has the darkest dark possible for that color on one end and the lightest light on the other end. So that I that you might check into if you're if this is a problem and want to help solve that problem. Uh, using the value line approach to setting up the palette, I think is a very good way to go. And it keeps you organized. Okay, how about the technique of creating the change in colors that you would see in the sky, which is what the person asked for, and keeping a smooth blend without getting, uh, over, without overstroking. If you have the value line on the palette, such as I have here, that's going to be a big help because not, when colors change in the sky, we also see value change too. And so you can control the value change by where you reach for in these various values of these colors as well as the color change. So I'll show you now technically. This is mostly, a tech, as I said, mostly a technical lesson. Uh, technically blending. Uh, but the principle I was talking about is simply the principle of what happens to color and value as light is hitting them. As more light is blending in with the sky here, we see that the color gets, the value gets lighter, but the color gets a little warmer. You can see this is a little bit leaning a little bit more towards green than the blue does here. So in essence, we have that, that gradation of from blue on to about a, to a to a blue that sort of leans towards green. So we have a gradation, but we also have a gradation in in value. And so what we see in this blue up here, we would find the value for. And so what we do now is go in my value line, and now I'm going to show you how we can can find that value and that color and get it right before we ever start. So I will say, okay, that looks very close to this middle value of blue that I have here. And so I will load my brush. I always load, when I start, I always load my brush on both sides like this, especially if I'm doing something like that. Then I'll hold my brush up to this. Does that look like, it looks a little bit on the dark side. And it looks like it might have just a tiny bit of red-violet in it. And so then I'll reach for just a tiny bit of that red-violet. And I load the brush really, really good right here. And, and then I'll hold it up there. And I'll say, okay, that looks relatively close. And now I'll start stroking. Now, when I stroke, I generally will use, no matter what the subject is, I generally will use a crisscross stroke unless I'm blocking in. If I'm blocking in and don't want quite so much paint on there, I will use more of a scrubbing stroke. But to apply the paint, I'll hold the brush not straight out like that because that's just going to pull it down and that's going to cause the kind of thing I was talking about earlier where your your paint doesn't go on, it all doesn't go on and then you end up having to stroke it several times. And, so, and also, returning to the palette to load without trying to, without trying to use up all the paint in the brush. Using up the paint in the brush is a bad idea when you're creating a painting. What you want to do is to uh, control the value and the color so you 
always are uh, you always watch how much paint is in the brush and you pay attention to when you really need to reload that brush don't try just to use it all up so I'm hoping I'm addressing several issues that people might be having now as I can see I, I put this in an angle here because I see that gradation at an angle there you see that dark doesn't go all the way across the sky there the dark and the light are moving in this direction it does get a little bit lighter as it goes over there and so as it gets a little bit lighter well then I can move my brush now here's here's the gradation part I can move my brush into that lighter value it's one about um, maybe a full value a full interval uh, lighter and so I move my brush in that and what I can do then is to begin to stroke right in that transition part let's get that just a little bit lighter I'll load the brush and I, and I can even check it there is that light enough and pull keep pulling that in to get the brush loaded now now here I get a good transition if I start that first stroke on top of my previous stroke and then I'll take the brush and pull just very lightly over that seam that I created when I did that now I'm going to get that just even lighter and we'll put the lighter let's get it very light even lighter than we see it there over here there we go now you see when I first put that stroke put, first put that stroke on like that you see that seam now if I just give this give the the uh, seam just a couple of little sw easy light swipes you see there then you get that smooth transition and you can continue to get that uh, a smooth transition as you go down I see I need to pull a little bit more white white so I'm going to just reach up for my white in my supply here and I'll just put it right there so that I can have that to to refer to now now what happens when I go down in this direction and I begin to see whoops okay that's good I'm glad I did that now to get that blended I wipe the paint off the brush I don't have to rinse it I wipe the paint off the brush I hold it at a, a closer almost flat not quite just a a, a a very slight tilt of an angle and very lightly pull it one direction and then another and then I'll pull it straight down like that and you see it's sometimes straight across like that depending and you see then I get that blend and by using that very light stroke like that it doesn't cause it to over blend or look uh, over over blended all right now let's change that color we change the value already let's change the color and and see if we can make that work now uh, this gets lighter as it comes down here but it also begins to lean a little bit more towards green now what I know about that is that I could add a little bit of yellow into that to make it lean in that direction but I also have other choices I can choose a green that has blue in it and by having uh, because this is blue if I choose a green that has blue in it uh, like a phthalo green or uh, the Viridian I like the Rembrandt Viridian uh, when I say Viridian I'm not talking about those old milky <laughs> middle value Viridians the Rembrandt Viridian which is nice and transparent and a really really uh, clear color of blue green or green that leans towards blue well I've got it right here so now here's what I'll do I could put it right here and I could build, build the value line of that but uh, what I'm going to do here is rather than build a full value and just show you I've got this value and I want to get it lighter so what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of the white here and I will change that value like that and then I'll pull this into it and get a gradation get a change in value here now if I add just a touch of this into this that will give me a blue green a, a blue leaning towards green that I'm seeing there and you can see it right there and there again I can I can gauge just how much of that green goes into that blue by just holding the uh, holding the palette knife up to the color 
or holding the brush up to the color. I'm going to rinse the brush out now and we're going to do that color change in a transition that's a smooth transition uh, that doesn't look overworked. And we're going to change the value and the color. So what I'll do there is I'll reach into that new color I mixed and I'll pick it up in the brush and I'll put just a little bit more light into it. Now let's see here. There we go. Now there's the change in the color first. Change in the color. Now I'm going to pull that right up into that blue just like that. And now I'm going to take a paper towel, pull the excess paint out of the brush, and I'm just going to very lightly put, use a kind of a crisscross stroke but over the seam that where those two colors and two values mix meet. And I can continue to do that. And if I do that too much, it'll all get the same. So you see I've got that transition now. I've got the smooth transition that I was looking for right there, and I can continue that. I don't need to continue it much now because you get the point already. I can now go back with my brush into that green, into that uh, blue-green that leans towards blue, or, uh, and now I can get the lighter value, load the brush really, really good, and then come down with the lighter value right here at that same angle. Uh, see, I'm going a little bit more conservatively here because, uh, because I don't want to go too fast. I want to control the speed of that. Now you see, I've got that seam now. We've got the seam and we've got that angle. We've got to let this kind of gradate out that it goes as it goes flat. So I'll just pick up some white here with that. And you see, we've got that. Let's pick up some more white now. See towards that uh, bottom that it's beginning to get a little bit uh, warmer. And so um, can add maybe just a little bit of red about it. And they see now, now I've got the I've got the change in color and the change in value, but we've got the seam. And that's when I will rinse the brush off really, really good. Dry it thoroughly. Don't want an ounce of that uh, solvent left in the brush. Now I'm going to just so, well you can you can you can do this too you can sort of hold it very flat very lightly and weave and then pull come back in the other direction and then come in this direction keep doing it very lightly as long as you use a light hand over uh, doing this you will you will create that smooth blend without without having your color over mixed just a very very light hand and if it continues to move up like it is here we just keep following it and just be sure that you don't lose your gradation when you do that get just a little bit more right there just a light, very very light touch very light very light which is a whisper touch i kind of think of it as and so now we got a pretty smooth gradation i could get it even smoother if i keep going that way but I hope that shows you now and you you don't just wait until next time you need it if you practice it now you get the the technique part of it down the how to hold the brush how how much pressure do you want to pull on the brush what angle are you applying applying that paint to the brush and and how much value change and how much color change to what degree is the value changing to what degree is the color changing so give that a try now and see if that doesn't work for you. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new. Oh, come on. Smooth.